covering the villages for you. Here's Jill Winters and the VNN Lifestyle News Team. A well-known villages athlete keeps breaking records. Plus, a summer heat wave serves as a reminder to stay hydrated. Whether she's competing on the local or national level, 86-year-old Tiny Kazel continues to shine and break records, just as she did in Pittsburgh at her 11th National Senior Games. We spoke with the Village Santiago resident prior to her trip as she focused on one specific goal. I could possibly break a, a record, um, a national record with my discus and possibly a world record too. So. That's what I'm working at. It, it's something inside of me. Um, it's, it, it, I, I can't quit. I, I just can't stop. It, it, and this has been going on all my life. I mean, since I've been 10. Um, it's just like, uh, if, I, if I can't do this, then I start something else. And, and it's always physical, and it's always athletic, and it's always, um, because I guess that's what I was good at, so that I just stuck with it. And I don't think you ever lose that competitive spirit. You really never lose it, but your body loses the, you know, the phys physical part of it. It's, uh, it's hard to keep it, keep it strong and keep, it, you know, keep up with it. I think that's the hardest thing. While competing in discus at nationals on Sunday, she broke the women's 85 to 89 record on her second attempt with a throw of 56 feet, eight and a quarter inches. And then she broke her own record on her fifth attempt with a toss of 56 feet, 11 and three quarters inches. She has five more events to compete in as she continues to power ahead. As the years go by, you get weaker, you know, you don't get much strength in there. Just that's why I spend time at, at the gym, you know, working out and just keeping your strength. After you re reach 80 years old and over, you don't re maintain that. I mean, you have to go to the gym all the time in order to maintain the muscle because it breaks down so fast and it just goes away. I can't foresee that, uh, that I would do another national. Physically, you, you, you're, um, I'm tired. <laughs> I get tired really quickly. So, and I try to do the best I can all the time, but uh, physically it's tiring. I think I still have the uh, abilities and the um, capabilities of doing what um, I still enjoy. When she returns, Tiny plans to pick up her golf clubs in an effort to put her golf game together while also playing softball. Learn even more about Tiny's National Senior Games record in Tuesday's sports section of your Daily Sun. Florida is experiencing the hottest year on record, and the National Weather Service says it's only projected to get hotter. Last Wednesday, Sumter County's heat index reached 104 degrees Fahrenheit and higher with the actual temperature hovering around the mid-90s. Highs in the villages have been running two degrees above normal this July, as predicted by the Climate Prediction Center. The record highs have also caused safety concerns among weather and health care experts, prompting the Florida Department of Health to issue several heat advisories throughout the state. Older adults are particularly susceptible to rising temperatures, according to the National Institutes of Health. The Village's Health Population Health Supervisor and Registered Dietitian Kristen Hubbard says take a proactive approach and carry an insulated water bottle while on the go in the golf court, on the pickleball court, or wherever. That's going to be helpful. Hydrate before and after and during exercises as well. Kristen says sensing thirst is actually the brain warning you that you are dehydrated. So waiting until you feel thirsty to drink means you are already on your way to being dehydrated. Water-based activities are a great option in the heat. However, Kristen says you can still easily get dehydrated while in the pool, so it's still very important to hydrate. WVLG senior forecaster Dave Toll says the villages has been running high temperatures between 94 and 96 Fahrenheit, which is in the normal range of Florida summer temperatures. However, one WVLG weather watcher reported 101 Fahrenheit within the village of Bel Air on July 4th, which put the surrounding area into the National Weather Service's heat advisory category for the first time this year. Dave says if you are exposed to direct sunlight, the heat index value can be increased by up to 15 degrees Fahrenheit, and heat indexes meeting or exceeding 103 degrees Fahrenheit can lead to 
danger heat disorders with prolonged exposure or physical activity in the heat, such as heat cramps and heat exhaustion. Learn even more about keeping cool during this heat wave starting on the front page of Tuesday's Daily Sun. After this short break, we're going to tell you about some musical classes available to you. Stay with us. More Village's lifestyle news is coming up right after this on VNN. When cleaning your air ducts, it's important to clean the entire system. And air duct cleaning from Stanley Steamer removes pounds of trapped dirt, dust, and allergens from your home completely. The cleaning improves your home's indoor air quality, keeps your home cleaner longer, and can even improve the efficiency of your HVAC system. We want you to have the cleanest and healthiest indoor air possible. So call for a free inspection today. Stanley Steamer gets your home cleaner. You want to enjoy your home, we know. To live well is to eat well. Doc's Restorations knows you want a beautiful kitchen to enjoy your favorite meals with your family. Licensed, bonded, and insured, we can make it happen. Bathroom? We work with trusted brands and American-made materials for a squeaky clean result. <laughs> family owned and operated for over 14 years, experienced craftsmen and design consultants. We stand on it. We'll make you look like a million. It's up to you what you tell your neighbors. And much more. So relax. Doc's Restorations will take care of it all for you. One company, one source, one solution. This is VNN. Residents can be spotted line dancing around this community. Wendy Stevens wants people to experience line dancing, but to different music. The Village of Hemingway resident leads line dance hip hop sessions offered through the Enrichment Academy. She says every student has such a great attitude and it's fun to see their excitement when they learn something new. Christina and Kevin O'Connell are two of her dance students. Christina thought this might be fun, and now when she is on the dance floor, Kevin is right there with her. Kevin says hip-hop and line dancing are a lot more fun and creative, and he describes Wendy as a little ball of force. While learning the moves along with the song Down South Shuffle, Wendy liked a move Christina was doing and says, oh, you can snap there, bam bam, and calls the move the Christina. During the six-week dance sessions, Wendy uses basic line dance steps and adds a few hip-hop moves into the mix. She aims to teach three line dances per class, and she sends the students an email where they can see a video of the dance so they can practice at home. Wendy hopes students get a joy for dancing and says it would be super fun if they take some of their dances to the squares and dance with their favorite band. Here's your VNN five-day weather. From the WVLG Weather Center, this is Christopher James with your VNN five-day forecast. Wednesday's high in the village is 90 degrees, overnight low 74. Thursday coming in at 93 with 74 overnight as well. Chance of rain Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, anywhere from 30 to 40 percent, mostly in the afternoons. This weekend, highs in the mid-90s with overnight lows in the mid-70s. Great weather ahead for Florida's friendliest hometown.
Tim Robinson believes there are a lot of people that are looking for music to express themselves, and he helps to make that happen while playing a stringed instrument. The Village of Buttonwood resident leads a ukulele first step class from the Enrichment Academy. Students can learn the basic chords of a unique sounding instrument. They can play soprano, concert, and tenor ukuleles. Loaner ukuleles are available from Tim upon request. On the first day, a $12 fee is payable to the instructor. The next class will start at 1 p.m. August 23rd at Pimlico Recreation, and it runs for six weeks. To register, you can visit an at-your-service location or go to theenrichmentacademy.org. Broadcasting and streaming live from Lake Sumter Landing in a small building with big windows near the water. AM 640, 102.7 and 104.5 FM. Your soundtrack to the villages. WVLG Wildwood. The number one complaint that I hear from most of my patients, and, and remember, some of these patients are here against their will, right? Somebody sent them here. They came in kicking and screaming with their, with their arms crossed. And even those folks uh, will tell me their biggest issue that they, that they think they have or that they even will acknowledge is understanding people in social settings. <laughs> you can have a, a very subtle high frequency loss and very good normal low frequency hearing, and you get into a crowd with noise, you're lost, right? You hear people, but you don't understand them. All you have to do by law to, to fit somebody with a hearing aid is have them push a button to tones, have them repeat words in a quiet situation, and uh, do bone conduction, uh, where they put a bone oscillator on your head, right? That's all it takes legally. But, but if somebody tells me, hey doc, I can't hear well in noise, or, or I'm lost in crowds, don't I want that information? Don't I, don't I want to assess that? So speech and noise testing is, is is my favorite uh, test that I run uh, with patients because it quantifies their acknowledgement of, of a complaint that they know they have. It lets me show them, compared to normal hearing individuals, this is your handicap in noise. With the Villages and Wildwood Middle High School football teams working away this summer, we continue to focus on the players. For Wildwood, they have been a team recently that relies on an aerial attack that sets the tone for their team, so wide receivers are important. Head coach Vincent Brown Sr. says they have been a pass-heavy team to try to open up the run game. Five of six leading receivers have departed via graduation or transfer, so there are a lot of targets up for grabs. Lorenza Simmons is the only starting receiver with experience on the roster, making him likely the top target for sophomore quarterback Cavante Corbin in the fall. Coach Brown says they are going to be leaning on everybody, even the young guys, to come out and step up. He says they are trying to do seven on seven at least once a week for the players so they can begin to understand the game and everything they do. Rising sophomore Terrell Poiser thinks it's coming along really well as they are working every day to get better. Dallas Isham has waited for his chance to start in the offense for the Wildcats, and now he has been getting a lot of targets during 7-on-7, seven seven, so he is ready for his turn. 7-on-7 seven seven experience has also been big for Village's wide receivers this summer. The Buffalo do have a handful of returning pass catchers along with a few new receivers sprinkled in. The biggest addition to the receiving core is 6'4", 225-pound rising junior Jonathan Harding. He is a former quarterback in Wildwood transfer. Head coach Richard Pettis says Jonathan is a very smart football player that understands the game and it helps no matter where he is lining up on the field. Jonathan is the older brother of VHS rising sophomore quarterback Patrick Harding. Jonathan has already been using his size to shield off defenders to make catches in traffic this summer. 
They also have five foot seven Sebastian Florian, who is proving to be a reliable option as a slot receiver too. VHS wide receivers coach Dennis Nisbet says the amount of growth Sebastian has shown has been off the charts. He uses his speed to get behind defenders and find open zones, which you don't see many kids his age be able to do. The Villages also adds Connor Cook, a transfer from Tavares High School, and Xavier Walton to their wide receiver core. We'll be back with more news from Florida's friendliest hometown. Stay with us. More Villages lifestyle news is coming up right after this on VNN. This hurricane preparedness tip from VNN and WVLG is brought to you by The Villages Insurance. Hi, this is WVLG senior forecaster Dave Cole. Understanding the forecasts are an important part of being prepared for severe weather situations. A hurricane watch indicates hurricane conditions are a threat within 48 hours. Review your preparation plans, keeping informed and be ready to act if a warning is issued. A hurricane warning alerts you that hurricane conditions are expected within 36 hours. Complete your preparations. Tropical storms bring winds between 39 and 73 miles per hour, and hurricanes can produce winds over 74 miles per hour. Keep listening for more information, including supplies, pet tips, detailed information to keep on hand during hurricane season, presented by the Villages Insurance. And thank you for listening to your Villages soundtrack, WVLG. That mission control, I don't understand. Over. What's your position? Over. Uh, I need my hearing aids reprogrammed. Joe here. We've remotely changed your hearing aid prescription. How do I sound? Copy that, loud and clear. Program your hearing aid from anywhere in the universe with Global Live. Only at Elite Hearing Centers of America. UF Health's Shan Surgeons recently performed the first paired kidney donation program transplants, saving a Summerfield father of two and a 26-year-old from Georgia. Justin Terrell received his first kidney transplant from his dad when he was just 13. That kidney lasted 22 years before a bout with COVID-19 destroyed his donated kidney's function. The Paired Kidney Donation Program offers paired exchanges for all incompatible donor and recipient pairs through a national donation system. Not all willing donors are compatible matches with a recipient of their choice, and when that happens, the program can find someone who needs a kidney that the donor is a match with and bump their original intended recipient further up the waiting list. That happened to Justin and his wife Megan, who is a lead phlebotomist at the Village's Health. On March 30th, they got the call that a match was found. Megan's kidney went to a 26-year-old Cheyenne Alberton, who lives in Georgia, while Justin received a kidney from Stormy Murty from North Carolina. They all recently celebrated a month post-operation. Justin is looking forward to life without dialysis, a treatment process Stormy refers to as brutal, and more time with his little girls. Stormy says she is humbled and blessed to give this gift of life to Justin. She has a Donated Life license plate, and she wears a kidney donation shirt at every 5K she does. Cheyenne plans to get back into shape and learn Korean. She plans to attend her first concert since receiving her diagnosis. Take a look at Tuesday's Daily Sun for more on this four-way kidney transplant success story. An organization that aims to help improve the lives of animals is the Chase Animal Rescue Sanctuary in Webster. One way they do this is by allowing visitors to meditate with sloths, do yoga with lemurs, and paint with primates. Owners Nina and Donna Vasallo work to bring awareness to endangered species through volunteer work and special events at the sanctuary. Donna says it's a neat experience to make a difference in the life of an animal that has been abused or neglected. 
Nina started the sanctuary with a group of cats and dogs, then they took in a 30 year old brown lemur named Tracy that still lives there today. They evolved over the years, taking in even more lemurs and tamarind monkeys. Nina says they want to make an impact on the species they have there that are at most risk in the wild. Currently, they have more than 140 animals on property, including ring-tailed black and white ruffed, red ruffed, and brown lemurs. Nina and Donna came up with lemur yoga during the pandemic as they brainstormed fundraising ideas. After about 300 people showed interest, they started the program. Donna says they offer a bit of something for everybody. All funds they raise from the activities go toward funding Chase Animal Rescue Sanctuary and preserving endangered species. They're going to be having a painting with primates 4 p.m. Friday. A local artist will help participants paint a chosen picture on a canvas while lemurs jump from tree to tree visiting guests. All materials are included. You can visit chasesanctuary.org to sign up. It's time now for a brief commercial break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. More Village's Lifestyle News is coming up right after this on VNN. The Sumter County Sheriff's Office has created a free mobile app to give our citizens quick and easy access to all critical information needed to help keep the community safe. To download the app for free, search Sumter County Sheriff's Office on Google Play or the App Store. With our app, you can submit a tip, receive alerts on criminal activity in your area, search for sex offenders, inmates, the most wanted list, and much more. Together, we can keep Sumter County a great place to live, work, and play. Relaxing or romancing? Thank you for listening to Your Village's soundtrack, WVLG. The best mix of music, the songs you love. Your Village's soundtrack, WVLG. We have a new segment right here on the VNN Lifestyle News Show. Monday through Friday, we get an update from the Village's Entertainment about what's coming your way. So, here you go. I'm Natalie from the Village's Entertainment, here with your entertainment beat. Lazy Max Taco Shack not only hosts comedy nights, but it is a great location for entertainment seven days a week. Every Thursday, Empire Trivia will host a trivia night at Lazy Max 6 to 8. So grab your friends and make plans to head on down to play. Comedy goers can look forward to tickets for the next comedian on sale, Brian Aldridge, to hit the box office on Wednesday. Are you ready to learn about the crops that fuel your active lifestyle? It's time to book a tour at the Villages Grown for one of their farm tours. This guided walking tour teaches you all about the process of growing your local produce. Tickets can be purchased at thevillagesentertainment.com or at a box office near you. You can't always get what you want, but you can get tickets to the U.S. Stones coming to Savannah Center August 12th. This Rolling Stones tribute faithfully recreates the moves and styles of the Rolling Stones with a six-member All-American cast. Tickets are available now. Musical theater fans can get excited for Victory Productions' Dreamgirls coming to Savannah Center August 17th and 18th. Follow the journey of three friends chasing their dreams in a story full of grit, heartbreak, and hope. With iconic musical numbers including And I Am Telling I'm Not Going, Family, and I Am. If you're looking for more inspiration, Pee Off the Show will be at the Sharon on October 30th. This show follows the story of French singer Edith Piaf's journey to stardom through her unforgettable songs and unpublished works. All of these tickets are available at the Village Entertainment box office location near you, online at thevillagesentertainment.com or over the phone. Tune in Wednesday to hear all about the Sharon's Broadway subscription along with their brand new Changemaker series featuring compelling tales from around the world. That's your entertainment and I'll see you Wednesday. 
And for even more entertainment news, here's Mark Edward Willows with this week's entertainment news update. Hi everyone, Mark Edward Willows here with the latest in entertainment news. Well, as you know, it is official. Ryan Seacrest is taking over the duties hosting Wheel of Fortune from Pat Sajak next season. And now the rumors are floating around what will happen to the show, meaning the content itself. Will there be some changes? Well, Ryan being the creative guy that he is... One never knows, so tune in to watch. As you know, over the 41 years the show has been on television, it has gone through some transitional periods, so there is always a possibility some games and things may change along the way. Shania Twain recently took a spell during one of her concerts last week, and we are happy to announce that she is doing all right, feeling well, and she just took a tumble on stage, believe it or not, during the song, Don't Be Stupid, she was singing, and this is where it happened. So anyway, we are wishing Shania the best. Remember the TV series Walking Dead? Well, apparently, it will be returning back in a spin-off and bringing back two of the veterans. They're not saying who they are, but from the original series. So we will be looking for a network and an air date for that. The movie Paddington, about that little lovable bear. Well, anyway, Paddington 3 is in the works right now. They are planning on making a brand new movie. However, there has been no cast yet chosen or air date. So I will keep you posted on that. Jennifer Lopez getting into another business, this time the booze business. Well, we shouldn't really say the booze business, but she's getting into the cocktail business. There's going to be a new Jennifer Lopez cocktail that is going to be available in stores coming maybe as early as next year. So let's be looking for that. Also happy to report Madonna is out of the hospital. As you know, a few weeks ago, she was in ICU for a bacterial infection. The material girl is doing much better and she is telling her fans do not worry I am on the men however she said it is a slow work in progress so once again uh, we do wish Madonna there the best and the writers in Hollywood still on strike the actor strike which were supposed to go on strike June the 30th a little bit averted now they are still negotiating and possibly July the 15th maybe the walkout date which is coming up so we will keep you posted on all of that right now I'm Mark Edward Willows that is the latest in entertainment news everyone out there take care and I will see you the next time the Villages is the place to be when it comes to great musical entertainment. These are the bands ready to perform for you on Wednesday. That's all the news we have for you now. Make sure to pick up a copy of Wednesday's Daily Sun to read about a resident donation to Operation Shoebox. Make sure you get out there and enjoy the village's lifestyle. out a new program called Project Eagle Eye. This crime-solving program gives owners of surveillance cameras the opportunity to register them with a the sheriff's office. If a crime does occur in your area, deputies will use Project Eagle Eye to quickly identify registered cameras and if necessary, contact the owners to view the video footage. To learn more about how to register for the Project Eagle Eye program, visit our website or give us a call. Rocking. Dancing, relaxing, or romancing. Thank you for listening to Your Village's soundtrack.
WVLG. Best mix of music. The songs you love. Your village's soundtrack. WVLG.